with Elohim and he transforms our lives. Join us even as we worship. Listen to the word and pray. We believe it will be a fruitful time this afternoon. Amen.
mercies and his loving kindness welcome to me this springs this is our day number two it's been a blessing and thank you for keeping faith and joining us in this journey we are in the book of galatians and uh, today we are looking at galatians chapter two now we finished up galatians chapter one where the apostle paul was trying to or was actually confirming and telling them how or the basis for the authenticity of the gospel that he preached to them. He told them that uh, the gospel I'm preaching to you, it, it is not as though I went to school to learn it. He said, no. I didn't get it from anyone and I was not, not taught by anyone. He said that the Lord Jesus himself revealed himself to me. So the rest of chapter one, what he was doing was that he was giving them proof of how the Lord Jesus himself taught him. In fact, he told them that when, as soon as the Lord separated, uh, I mean, the Lord caught him in Damas, uh, on the road to Damascus and then he, he arrested him, so to say, and then got him converted. He, he, he went to, to Arabia for three years. He said, I didn't even go to Jerusalem. I went straight to Arabia. And there I was in fasting and prayers, waiting on the Lord. So it was three years in Arabia. That the Lord Jesus himself, in revelation, he came to teach me this gospel that I'm preaching. The reason is that the, the other apostles, the 12 apostles, they, Jesus taught them when he was here in his flesh, physically. And so they had, they, people can believe that, yes, they work with Jesus. And so when they preach the gospel, people will believe it. Paul is saying, mine, Jesus came to me by revelation. So no human being taught me. I'm not a second generation disciple of Jesus. I'm also a first generation disciple. Man came by revelation in Arabia. Then in chapter 2, he continues by saying that after the three years in Arabia, 14, after, after 14 years again, he went back. So he has spent 17 years sitting at the feet of Jesus being taught and things were revealed to him. Some of those things that were revealed to him were the things that he taught in Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 11. says, the Armenian free radio honor. Uh -huh. that which I received from the Lord. He, he, 17 years under the feet of Jesus, you know it's no joke. So he told them that. And he said that when he has taught me, I came and I started preaching the gospel. And this gospel I'm preaching is the gospel that is free from the curse of the law. So let's go back to Galatians chapter 2. And he, he now tells how he took Titus with him to go to place. He said, sometimes he preaches openly. Sometimes he preaches privately. He goes to certain people and preaches to them privately. Because if other family members even see the person listening to me, he said, my preaching will be in vain. But I only carry Titus with me. And Titus was a Greek. He was not a Jew. He was not a, 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 an Israelite. He's a, he's a Greek. But he's the only one I carry with me. And he said, because I believed in the liberty that Christ has given me. Even though he, Titus was a Greek, I never compelled him to be circumcised. So, if I am preaching this gospel, this is what I believe. Let's read from verse 3. Titus, sorry, 
Galatians 2, 3 to 5, and then we'll come again and read 11 to 13. 3 to 5, and then 11 to 13. Galatians chapter 2, verse 3 to 5. Yet not even Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And this occurred because, and this occurred because of false brethren, secretly brought in, whom came in by stealth, to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Verse 5. To whom we did not yield submission, even for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Praise God. He, he said, you see, sometimes this is what he's, he's, he's teaching us here. And sometimes we can take things for granted. When you sit at home and you are turning on the TV station, then you get to those people doing those things. Recently, I got to somebody and they are doing Sikedro like it's no joke. But there was a Bible. And the Bible is there. And they are doing secret and they are saying that. And they are quoting some scriptures. They take this verse, they break the leg. Then they put it inside the bottle. They take this one, they break the, the neck. And they put it on the party back. You can't even tell whether they are Christians or they are Muslims or they are Buddhists. Or it is syncretism throughout. And they are doing these things on TV. Apostle Paul said that with these people, we won't even give them one hour. And sometimes, some of us can yield eh, and say, hey, you know, you know. by the time you realize you are confused. Because one sentence can pass through your head that can shake a certain foundation of yours. Remember. He says that this occurred because certain false brethren, they have been brought in secretly to spy in on our liberty in Christ. How can these people say they are worshipping God? Yet the burden of the law is not on them. And it says the only reason why these people come in is to bring us back into bondage. Let me tell you how this it goes. So, you might be free. Everything is fine for you. You have faith in God until you encounter one of these dangerous people Paul is talking about. And then the person will just tell you, I can see that all is well, but some people want to do this. And then fear enters you. The fear enters you. And immediately, and let me tell you, those who are true, once they see that evil is coming and they speak to you, they make sure fear doesn't enter you. In fact, they pray for you and they get fear out so that you continue to walk in your liberty. But those who are liars, they put fear in you. And that fear never leaves. Because that is the only thing they get to lock you at their feet. Apostle Paul said that they are coming to look into our liberty so that they bring us into bondage. May God deliver us from such people. Now let's go to 11 to 13. Now, when Peter had come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed. For before certain men came from James, he would eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision. And the rest of the Jews also played the hypocrite with him, so that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. And this tells you how the disposition of leadership is so important. When Peter had come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face. Paul is trying to say that this gospel of grace that frees us from the curse of the law is so important that even when Peter, the one who walked with Jesus for three and a half years, the one who was there when Jesus was transfigured, the one whom Jesus told and said that, Peter, do you love me? Peter said yes. He said, feed my flock. Tend up my sheep. Feed my, my, my lamb. That same Peter. Paul didn't fear to rebuke this Peter. And tell the Peter that, Peter, you are a hypocrite. Because Peter's actions were trying to give credibility to the law. 
Peter, before some Jews will come back, you were eating with the Gentiles because you know that it is only a Jewish law that prevents one Jew from eating with another Jew. We are no longer under the law. In Christ Jesus, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither male nor female. There is neither slave or free. In Christ Jesus, we are all one. So then I can eat with you. So you were eating with us. As soon as we saw other Jews coming from Jerusalem, you have separated yourself. Peter, you are a hypocrite. And Paul says that because I am defending the gospel of grace, I resisted Peter to his face. Then he said, the rest of the Jews played the hypocrite with Peter. See, uh, come here, I say, see what Paul is talking about is what in the can we call it if you share name. And we can face look look. If you share name, hey, I'll be doing this and it is okay. And all of a sudden, certain people appeared and I want to show a different thing, that hypocrisy. And he said that even Barnabas, the one who held Paul's hand, took him as someone that the whole church was afraid of. It was Barnabas who convinced the church in Jerusalem that this Saul of Tarsus has truly repented and that he has now been born again and he's now a believer. So accept him. He is Barnabas. He's the one who took him there. He was the one with Paul that they were in Antioch together, the same Antioch he was talking about, that they were together. And when the, 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 the apostles and the prophets were praying, that the Lord spoke, that separate unto me Paul and Barnabas. This great man, because Peter was being hypocritical, he too became hypocritical. When it comes to this false teaching, we, we must stand up for what is right. Not just that, but we must also stand up against what is evil and what is wrong. Don't just say, oh, let me just preach me my, my gospel. That is not what the Bible is teaching us here. Peter didn't even have to preach law. His behavior was teaching the law and he was rebuked. Sometimes, when you see that there is error that will lead people astray, deliver them, teach them the truth. And if the lie is trying to stay with them, rebuke the lie, confront it. Confront it. And it says that, and the rest of the Jews also played the hypocrite with him, so that even Barnabas was carried away. Church, here the Apostle Paul is teaching us something. And I want us to read verse 16. Quickly. Verse 16. Verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Christ Jesus, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. Aha. Uh -huh. So this is all that Paul was teaching about this is the centrality of the gospel of grace before jesus was born he lived he died and he resurrected there was what you call the old covenant it has the law and it has specific works things you have to do so that you will please god now god said that the bible is teaching us that all those things were shadows of the reality to come so when the reality came, the shadows must now give way for the reality. Nobody looks at the picture when the original human being has come. So the real thing is salvation through Christ Jesus. And he's saying that according to the law, you must do A, B, C, D. Then you will please God. According to the gospel of grace, you don't have to do any work because the truth is that if you decide to follow the law, no human being, not one person will be justified. That's the bottom line. You, it is not about, okay, there's the law, there is grace. Which one do you choose? Okay, me, I think I like the law. For by the law, no one will be justified. Because the laws at this point in time, they had 613 laws minus even uh, interpretations. 613. Do you know all of them? And can you keep all of them? And the Bible says that if you obey 612 and you offend in one, you have offended in all. So it says, for by the law, no one. 
So what Jesus did was that his death on the cross is the one that has paid the price for my sins yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That I believe in him, his work that he, that he did for me on the cross is the one that has crossed all my sins and that God doesn't look at the laws I have offended yesterday. He looks at what Jesus has done. He forgives my sin. I am born again. I am encouraged now to walk in the works of righteousness. Nobody should force me that I must do this. I must do that. I must do that. I must be circumcised. I must eat on Sunday. I don't have to go to church on Friday. I don't have to go to church on Saturday. I don't have to go to church on Sunday. I must wear something white in the mornings like this and wear yellow in the afternoon. And then when it comes to this, I must kill a goat and I must pour some blood somewhere. That All those things don't matter. Knowing that a man is not justified by the words of the law but by faith in Christ Jesus. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus that we might be justified by faith and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. Keep this truth and let it free you. Jesus has finished that work. You don't have to do anything else to, to get salvation. He's finished it. Justification and sanctification by the finished work of Christ Jesus is your portion. God bless you. Lift up your voice, child of God, and bless the name, the name of, of the Lord for your Jesus word as you have sung unto us. We give you praise, Father. We give you praise, Father. We give you praise, Father. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Aye, brase, kafala mpayo baze Ya kabando le menisha Kafanda panto mene ake zata Ya fakoze kempe le mene madeza Kafo santa tae Ya prose kehe Ya kabaze fasata Fakamba ni madoshe katanta Ya mpako le mene madeshe Kake zaka sota fata Ale fakazi kapros Wakia kazantu fakale Le kazata fali antapaya Madose kente feki Eleve kempe lempe telemeni sakafanta paya alei bakazenta fakanto le peteni ni koza in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Mm. beloved we just heard from the reading mm. that even Barnabas was led astray mm. we are going to pray and tell the Lord that He should grant us the grace that will look up to Him only mm. He looked at Peter and he was led astray you can look at men and women of God who are in offices or who are in positions and you'll be led astray. You are asking for grace. Our Lord, grant us a grace that will always look up to you only. We'll look up to you as we read the word and we see in your word. We'll look up to you only that will not be led astray. Lift up a voice out of God and cry to the Lord uh, that he will grant you the grace uh, that e as you study the word uh, and as you do that Lord, uh, you look up to him only. 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 That you will not be led astray. That you will not be led astray. Every wind of doctrine, uh, le everything that they will bring to us, you have. Lord, who grant you the grace uh, that as you search the scriptures uh, uh, and you find him, Lord, uh, you will not be led astray. Uh, let us look up to you, Lord. Looking 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 up to you, Lord. Grant us the grace to look up to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Looking to you, Jesus, the altar and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before us and your the cross despising the shame. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeshata falem belemene mekeze tapale enamado. Lefo zin kapa kote pele en tapale fazon tafaka. Elembra swa kafa kaze tafaka pala. Eya kafa kapala pa kaze kafa sen tapala. Ela fro kwa kaka fa kapala bato nebeden. Elembeke tele peke. Zika fasan kapala bato kate tata 
We give you praise. We give you praise. We thank you, Father. We bless you, Lord. Your name be glorified. Your name be honored, Father. We thank you for the grace to look up to you alone that we will not end. We thank you for the grace to focus our attention on you that, oh God, we will not look up to men and follow. But when error comes, oh God, grant us grace that your spirit will pick us, oh God, that we might grow for the truth. In the name of Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Beloved, we, we have just been shed more light in the world. We can see of a fact that it is not by our works. It's not by anything we will do. Because out of the 613, I'm not sure we can be able to recall all and obey all. But grace has found us through the finished work of Christ. You are asking the Lord Jesus, Father, grant me grace that Lord, that which you have given to me through faith that I've received in you, I will preserve the word I've received. Mm. I will walk in the word mm. that I will not be deceived. Lift mm. up a voice, child of God, mm. and cry to the Lord. Grace to walk in the word I've received. Grace to preserve that which you've received. Grace to walk in the word I've received. Grace to walk in the word I've received. Grace to walk in the word I've received. You will not be deceived. You will not be deceived. Nobody will reject your counsel. 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 Nobody will reject Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your work in the midst of your people. For your work in the midst of your people. For your work in the midst of your people. For your work in the midst of your people. For your work in the midst of your people. Beloved, you want to pray and ask the Lord that He Himself, as the owner and builder of the church, He should expose all those who have infiltrated the church with all kinds of false doctrine, with all kinds of different gospels, not that which he left for us. He himself should expose them. Jesus. He should shed his light on them. Hey. They should let their works be seen. That in themselves, oh, they will give up and run. I will lift up a voice and cry to the Lord. That he should expose anyone, anyone who has infiltrated our camp with any kind of gospel, which is not the true gospel. God himself should expose them. Lift up a voice and God and cry to the Lord that, that as we share his word, he himself should expose them. Tell <laughs> 
Thank you very much for joining us on Media Springs today. We thank God for your life and we trust that this moment has been a blessing to you. Continue studying the scriptures and continue in prayer. We trust that God willing tomorrow, same time, same channel, same space, same platform will come your way again with Media Springs. The Lord bless you and keep you, cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious upon you. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Amen.